blessed and glorious is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for today as well. May God help us out. I have my glasses with me always. Uh, because a brother always reminds me that I'm now old in age and I need these glasses to uh, read. But praise God, we are still here. We are still in the Church of Christ and this is the grace of God. All these years. And even if our external person is withering away, is getting older and older, our inner person is uh, being renewed. We we read from Isaiah the prophet. We're going to read the Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, chapter 40. Chapter 28, 40, and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 20. Don't, do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of his this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground. Then he blows one of them and we, they wither and the wheel pre-sweeps them and away like chaff. And this is the word of God for us today. Our message is and has to do with the days that we are going through and how we are supposed uh, to move forward. We are supposed to uh, move in our way. Are we from the ones that the Word of God describes as the ones waiting for Him. Before I reach to that point, and that is the ver this is the verse 13 and 31 of the same chapter, we need to confirm and understand that the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth, He is not growing weary and He is not stopping or ceasing. We know the one we believed in. And He is able to keep His promise, the promise that He has given us. And His Word is acceptable and worthy. The one who called us, invited us and called us with a holy invitation. We do thank God for it. He gave us the best and the continuous when it comes to our salvation. So we may be able to reach until the end. He is not going to grow weary or stop or cease acting. We do thank God for it. And the next thing we know is that He's a rich God. He is a God that all the things He has, He gives away. He is giving power to the ones that are in need, the ones that are weary. He is giving strength to the ones that need it. He is renewing the power to the ones that are waiting for Him, hoping on Him. And He's giving direction. And every good deed that is given, is given from whom? The Father of lights. The eternal God. And that knowledge is miraculous indeed. It is miraculous indeed for us to know that the Almighty God is watching down on us. is watching over us. And we are His. We are on His hands. Because our face and our names are, are written in His hands. We do thank God for it. Now, the Word of God speaks about those who wait. And you know what? The ones that are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ need to do so as a way of life. When the Word of God says, that the ones that are waiting for the Lord, hoping in the Lord, will renew their strength. That is in verse 31. This is not something that is passive for us. The one who is waiting 
the person that the creator of heaven and earth has visited is not having a passive stance and he cannot have such a stance against or rather in the plan of God that is in his life and that hope and that renewing has to do with the coming of the Lord and the, the gathering of the church and now that Christian has an active way of life he has a way of renewing his own power so that he may see God and visit uh, the eternal realms and the beginning of the blessed beginnings of the church from the beginning when it was founded the first apostolic church that is there was nothing that they uttered other than the Lord is coming even the disciples that are with the Lord and the Lord will be taken from their eyes just in a few hours and in the time it will come for him to be taken back to the throne of God they are asking when is your kingdom coming they are showing a a wandering about the eternal life and the kingdom of God and that hoping that that hope and that longing let's say for the eternal life of Christ and the kingdom of God is what makes the Church of Christ being the foundation of truth and we need to understand that the Lord is coming from the time and the second that the people of God starts second-guessing it the fallout will become will be will begin whether that is personal or in the church we are waiting for the Lord and the Lord is coming this is the first active stance that the person of God needs to have as he waits for the miraculous things of God to act in his life of course they are the people uh, that say 2,000 years now we are listening and we are expecting him but he didn't come yet these people are foolish they are as foolish as this astronaut was when he went to the moon and he said and they asked him what did you see there and he said I didn't see God he was waiting for God in the moon on the moon people are foolish when they say uh, people are when pe when people are saying that the Lord is um, delaying they are foolish they are so foolish be, uh, be, uh, because they are so foolish that they are not even taking care of their own salvation because they think that the salvation will not be lost. It doesn't matter where, when the Lord comes. We're not going to pay attention to it. We are saved. And there are many different false doctrines that are coming in the church, throughout the churches, so that they may drain away, they may draw away the, the focus of a Christian to the Lord. And from the stance of waiting, from the from waiting, that is an active stance, and I'm going to repeat that, it's not passive. Whenever God comes, I'm here waiting. No, the Word of God says that you need, and He describes rather the person and how he or she is supposed to wait for the Lord, for the ones that are hoping for the Lord, hoping in the Lord, waiting for the Lord. And now that person is placed in a specific uh, place. Um, I want to start from the church of the Corinthians. When the word of God, you don't need to open it up. Um, I'm always praising God for you, for the grace of God has been given to you through Jesus Christ. And you were washed. You were washed with his knowledge and grace in wisdom and understanding. And... You are not falling behind in any of the talents. A church that has taken the necessary, the necessity, has the necessities, has the talents, has all it needs to move forward in a successful manner. But that's not all, says the Word of God. It's not that you are now rich. It's not that you have things now or you have talents from your God or you have received that blessed stewardship and you are managing it and you are managing spiritual and physical things in the church no that's not all the apostle paul is going to emphasize 
is gonna he's gonna emphasize that he, they are not falling behind and they are still waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ therefore whatever I said before people of Corinth people of Kifisia today church of the Lord today they're given to you so that you may be able to activate your stance as you are waiting for the Lord if you are now not waiting for the Lord all other things are in vain the talents the Word of God are in vain all things are now receiving essence when you and I are from the ones that are waiting for the Lord are you waiting for the Lord that is the question then you have received the great promises of God in your life to the church in Thessaloni, Thessaloniki the Thessalonians the, the word of God will confirm further down <clears throat> because our doctrine is in heavens and we are now waiting for our Savior Lord Jesus Christ that is rather in Philippians the church in Philippines we are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our body of faith and it will be like his body through the power that he has to subdue all things what is the word of God saying here that you are not from the people that will stay that will stay behind your way of life has nothing to do with politics or ethnicities whether or not you are in a British or ne or Greek or Turkish doesn't matter but it has to or it, or it has to do with whether or not you are um, you, you are uh, you are in heavens you think and you are preparing yourself to meet God in the air because you will be transformed that is the moment that you need to care about and your body will be transformed when you are expecting him with the way of life that the Word of God is confirming and we do thank God for it to Thessalonians to the Thessalonians the same spirit applies and it's not the spirit of Paul is the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit is guiding brothers and sisters the Spirit of God is guiding the church and we are blessed because we are in this church and we are allowing the Spirit of God to move among us and we are happy seeing the fruition of the Spirit and that is not done by a person this however is done by God himself now in the church of Thessalonians the Lord will come again through his word in the first letter and he will speak about the name of the church the fame a the church that was that it was edified very quickly was built up very quickly and Apostle Paul was persecuted in, Th in Thessalonica he stayed there three weeks let's say I'm not if I'm not mistaken and he was speaking with the brothers there and he left and he was persecuted even but that didn't limit the Word of God didn't limit the people that gave their hearts to God and they uh, took care of the Word of God and they brought fruition in this place and the fame and the name of this church reached Macedonia Achaia and until the end of the earth because he says in chapter 1 and verse 7 you have become a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia the Lord's message rang out from you not only Macedonia and Achaia your faith in God has become known everywhere therefore we do not need to say anything about you and you need to work says further down you need to work for the living God and we thank God because you are waiting for God and you are waiting for Jesus Christ who was resurrected from the dead and is able to save us from the um, the damage the, the the judgment that is to come and you see now the name of this church and how far it has reached and the name of Jesus Christ is powerful in that church that is why the waiting the longing for the eternal life the longing for the coming of Jesus Christ is well known now to the whole earth that is why today we are supposed to greet one another and say the Lord is coming and we need to believe it we need to have that in our hearts 
let's say that this will be the logo of the church, a church that is waiting for the coming of Jesus. Let us say it one more. Jesus is coming. I mean. And now, as we are waiting and longing for the coming of Jesus, we will renew our powers and wait for Jesus Christ to come down and gather us. And we will see him face to face. I mean. Now, Peter, in the same manner, in the same spirit that Paul had, he would write in his second letter the following. Brother, the brother didn't say where he's reading for, from. I uh, will free translate it. Since all these things are happening, who do you need to be in reverence? And you need to come close to the day of the kingdom of God. Wait rather for it. Long for it. And he's adding something else to, pay, to make us pay attention. That our focus, longing, has an active stance, as we said before. We need to be active towards it. That is why, my beloved brethren, you are waiting. You need to wait uh, for, for the new heavens. You need to make sure that you are spotless and without a wrinkle, without a blemish. And as Apostle Paul wrote about you, in wisdom and understanding, you need to long for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he is speaking out to us today as well, not just to the churches we just read in the Bible, but he's speaking to us today. You need to study, you need to run, and you need to pay attention so that you may be spotless without a wrinkle or blemish at that day, the day of our Lord. And we therefore are waiting... We, therefore, are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are keeping our holiness, cleanness of hands, and we are trying to find out what the rightful will of God is, the perfect and good. That is why John, in the same spirit as well, he will say, the second letter, the first letter, rather, he will write, C the love that our Father has for us, and we were named sons of God. Are you enjoying the love of God? Are you happy that you are the child of God? Have you really understood the power and the magnitude of eternal God calling you son and daughter? Now, see the love of God and the love that He has given us calling us sons and daughters. That is why they, the world doesn't know us, because he, he didn't, they didn't know God first. And we still don't understand what we will be. But we know one thing, that when He will appear, and John is waiting, longing for that day, he doesn't say that we don't really know what will happen and let us see a different philosophy, a different, uh, a different pathway. No, he's waiting, he's longing for God. And he says that when he will come, we know one thing, that he, we will be like him and we don't care about anything else. John wants to finish the race. He wants to see him face to face and be like him. That is why anyone who has that same hope on God, he is cleansing himself. He is cleaning himself up. And let us pay attention to it for once more. That the stance of the longing of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is an active one indeed. It's a struggle, a, a road. The holiness of course and indeed. And it is very nicely put. Anyone who has that hope of waiting and longing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He won't do anything else other than cleansing himself, cleaning up himself. You need to be holy, therefore, because I am holy as well, says God Almighty. That is why the stance of the people of God, as the, word of, as the, the day is coming and we are seeing what is happening around us, 
And it is revealed to us that these days are going to be wicked and difficult, not only through the Word of God, of course, we have founded upon it, but also according to the prophetic Word. No matter where we stand, we hear the Spirit of God warning us about the things that will come down and will happen, the pains of the woman in labor. We now have the Word of God loud and clear. We are listening and we are not just staying behind. And we are waiting for the Lord that is good and perfect. I do thank God. We are not standing uh, and we are disregarding and we are saying, uh, it doesn't matter, everything is okay, we don't need to do anything. No, you, we are cleansing ourselves. And we are waiting for the Lord. And as I do wait for the Lord, I am indeed an active member of the Church of Christ. And... On that, I want to also see what that means, being active in the Church of Christ. What does it mean that I am indeed a part of the body of Christ? What does it truly mean? What I do want to say, rather, is that these latter days, the Lord is looking for uh, people to work with. Many times before, the, sp the Spirit of God spoke to us and said to us that you need to pray to your Lord, to the Lord that will bring down the harvest. And the Word of God also confirms it. Pray, because the field is large and the ones working are not many. We need to pray to God to lift up, to use workers, because the Word of God wants people to work with, searching for people to work with. And we need to be people that understand this, and understand completely comprehend and accept it and he that person now is praying for one the thing only may we be these people may we have that prayer and have that prayer in us and understanding the person that will have that prayer with that full understanding and says lord these are the latter days we are praying because the field is large and the the ones that are working the field are not many, then that person will understand that today, because you um, prayed in that way, I'm calling you to act in my work. Anyone who prays in that way, God will come along and says that I have chosen you. Do you now understand what the Word of God says? Anyone who with certainty and boldness comes forward and speaks to God, prays to God and asks for this. God says that I'm selecting you. I have selected you. Because many times we are praying and we say, Lord, please raise workers to go out and work your fields to gather the ones in need. Yes, go yourself. God says that I have selected you. And you know, the Lord when he selected many of the uh, the servants that became good uh, tools in his hands and had that holy hope and the certainty that the word of God needs to take place, then God selected them themselves. But people understood that they were weak. Moses, you need to go. And Moses said, but I am a person that is not good with words. I have selected you though. Blessed be the name of God. That is, this is the reality. When we are praying with certainty that the word of God is true. And we want God to raise up workers. The word of God will say, you go. And he hasn't doesn't matter whether or not you are old or young, woman or man. We all need to be prepared to work for Christ, to accept His calling. That is why these latter days, the Lord needs to feel our lips and wherever we are, wherever we stand, to praise His name and uh, testify, rather, His name. This is what the Word of God wants. It's not for the people of God to go to China. Yes, of course, people will be sent across the globe. What about Kifisia, though? What about Kamatero, though? 
What about Marusi? What about all these places in Athens? We need to go. Christ has selected us. And it's not for you to be sent. But as you are um, the messenger of God, no matter where you stand, find a way to raise, to lift the name of God up high. And you will see that the souls that are ready to listen to the word of God, they indeed will listen. Our brother George said this, uh, that they are their people that are paying great attention to themselves. And I met such a person and I was in the grocery shop and I was doing my groceries and I met such a lady that was taking great care of herself and I said to her may God bless you and it was like she was hit by lighting I said what are you talk what what do you just say I said God may bless you I've never heard this before she replied and people are thirsty for the word of God and they cannot quench their thirst with broken vessels that cannot hold water. But they can quench their thirst from the thirst from the water that is pouring out from a heart that is given to the Lord and has taken the decision to be the worker of Christ, a steward in the work of Christ. And as you wait for the Lord, therefore, as you wait for the coming of Christ, we have a work to do. We have work to do for the people that are around us for the people that we see in our everyday lives the people that are that are serving us the people that are bringing us the coffee uh the the ones that are filling our car with gas in uh in our everyday life our neighbors you have work to do you are praying for god to raise workers but you have people around you that you need to work for. Gideon, go with that power. You are now preparing the wheat. And you think about the days, the glorious days of Israel. But now you, you yourself need to raise yourself up. Rise up because God has selected you. And you will be sent as you have prayed for God to uh, rise up, to raise up people to work His work. And of course, there's a battle to be had. And we cannot have it. We cannot battle. We cannot struggle without the Word of God, without the help of God. We don't need to say much, but we need to be praying. We need to be alike with absolute knowledge and understanding to the Word of God. We need to understand what the Word is, what the commandment of God, the will of God is. And of course, the will of God is multifaceted, has many things to, for us to understand and comprehend. And the person of God needs to go through and understand it. You, the, uh, young people will come to me often and will ask, what is the will of God? And the will of God is clear. Always be happy. Always be praying. Thank God, because this is the will of God. Then what are you asking about? Why are you having a question about it? What is the will of God? Let us see just a small portion of it. There it is. But there's a different portion, a different version. Not version, but rather um, something extra, something more that God wants us to, to, to do as we are expecting Him. And it is what Apostle Paul says to Timothy. And we do thank God for His uh, word. He says to Timothy, this is why... It is good and nice for anyone who is willing. Uh, rather, and, and is good. God is good and willing. And He wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. This is a portion that God is willing. But He cannot do it by Himself. Of course, you understand what I'm talking about. Isn't God able? He's, he's doing whatever He wants. God, though, wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. But by using you, the one who is longing for the coming of Christ, because he, rather you, are the appropriate person to talk, to say. The angel from the skies, from the heavens, is not responsible for it. Of course, he can come down and be used, but that's not the will of God. You and I 
are supposed to go out and preach the word of God. This is what he said to the disciples. Go to the edge of the earth, the end of the earth. You have been selected to act according to the word of God. And you need to wait for the Lord. But how? By testifying his name. Blessed be the name of God. And as we live, as we experience him in our everyday, and we testify his name to others, we need to understand that the will of God is for all peoples to be saved. And when they do come and they, when they are saved and they come to the knowledge of the truth, then they need to be edified, they need to be built up so that God may give them the understanding of the truth, rather edifies them and make them perfect. Because you were found in a place and you said, God bless you and the path was open. Or anywhere else you were, you spoke about the name of Jesus. What will happen is the truth will come into that person. And that truth will bring that person to repentance. And we read before that this truth will come and they will meet the truth and they will understand the truth. And they will l be able to escape the, the uh, traps of the enemy because of that truth. And the reality is that the world is entrapped into the will of the enemy, Satan himself. And the, will of, the word of God is going to say to us in Corinthians again, that if the, 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 the Word of God is revealed to us, revealed to us the, the, the illumination of God couldn't come to them because the enemy blinded their mindsets. Because they were unfaithful, Satan blinded their mindsets. So that the uh, so that the illumination of God may not come into them. But against that weapon, against the wills of of the enemy, our Lord says this, and He has a way, rather, and He has a word, and we need to place that firmly in our hearts. And He says, in uh, the fifth uh, chapter, in one of the Gospels. That you are the light of the world. You are a, light, a, a city upon a mountain that cannot be hided, or cannot be hidden rather. And you are the light that is brought up and is now bring the light across this house. This is how your light needs to shine in front of people. They need to see your good deeds and praise God because of it. What is the word of God saying here? That the enemy... Because people were unfaithful, blinding their eyes and their mindset, so that the light of God may not come into them. And he says now to you, though, that you are the light of the world. God says to you that you are the light of the world. You are a city on top of the hill. Do not place that light under your bed. Do not be and so, a so and so a Christian. Rise. And the word of God is sounding now and bringing out his word to you. Rise yourself. Rise, rather. Bring your light out. And this light of the gospel of God will bring to light to the ones that are blinded. And they will be saved. And you will be a worker of Christ. Do you want that? that this is the truth. And we do thank God for it. You know, this is a responsibility, however. You are illuminating as a city on top of a hill and you have responsibilities we need to uh, confirm once and for good and for all that we also have we have authority but we also have responsibilities we don't have just authorities to enter into the holy of holies and ask whatever he wants of course ask and you shall receive knocking it will be open these are the authorities that you have the the rights and of course, we're talking about the believers, but we also have responsibilities. As the Word of God is confirming, you are a city on top of the mount. This is how your light needs to be coming down to the world. And, my dear brethren, 
when people when a person is being guided and managed by the spirit of god when he has the fruit of the spirit in him he is he is seen by others and that is a lie when you are in your professional environment and and there's also there's always um backstabbing and quarreling and you are peaceful because the fruit of the spirit is spirit is peace among other things of course among all the others then your light is shown in front of people when there's no aggravation in you but you have peaceful words and you have a heart that is bringing out streaming out love for your neighbor this is a light and in the same manner you need to bring that light out to the world before you speak we need to pay attention on the way that we are acting this is a reality that we need to pay great attention to it doesn't matter what you say of course it does and we're going to see that further down but what really matters is before you say it are you bringing that light of God because if you do then what you say will be according will be what you first you first have practiced and people will see that yes what you are saying the people that are in your environment yes what you are saying you have you are doing i went to a church and spoke about the about the things of god there was a person that believed in different things he wasn't baptized of course and when i spoke about the lord he understood and he was uh, bringing opposition but he wasn't able to stop me because I had a target that would speak to this uh, co-worker and I would wait uh, for us to be in the same uh, in the same place and we would be alone or we would be able to speak and and when the Lord allowed it I would bring the, the Word of God in to that conversation in a nice manner and when that co-worker saw I was rather in my not in a church but in my professional environment uh, he started that person started saying that he's a heretic Papa Nicolau is a uh, uh, he believes in heresies and he's not speaking about the Word of God in the right way and he spoke about the Word of God in the way that he thought it was right or rather what he believed uh, rather as he believed in the way that he know he knew you have to repent because hell is awaiting for you that was what he's saying and he and you will be burning eternally in hell the, this is he wasn't speaking about eternal life and a co-worker said to me and he said to him rather I'm listening to the words that you're speaking and the reality is that you are scaring me but on the other hand I'm seeing your life and I am happy and I am now peaceful because he was smoking he was drinking whenever he would he would we would go out he would um, he would do all these things that that were not proper of course he was speaking about God but he wasn't acting in his life in an appropriate way and that is why this person so said I'm listening to what you said I'm afraid of course but I'm seeing your life I'm better than yet than you so I'm safe then but this is the message for us today if you are acting and you having the way of life of a Christian then indeed then your words will have impact when you have love in you and they used to say to me you come here at 7 30 in the morning and you are singing hymns to God how can you find that love and happiness what are you what are they giving you in the church that you're going but this is a reality this is the way of life of a Christian and that will bring light to others rise therefore and bring that light to the world and it will be easy for you to speak about God because your life will be speaking for you before you even open up your mouth because people will be seeing you and they will see that you're not a person that is just like anyone else but you are something different you are someone that is drawing near people that are honest and we do thank God for it 
Therefore, my dear brethren, we are longing for the coming of the Lord these latter days. We are now showing with our way of life that we are mess the messengers of Christ. In the same way, though, the same rather applies for his church, in the church. The faithful person of God doesn't have dual life, double life. He has one life, one way of life, one relationship with God. It's not possible for you to be good outside, peaceful, and come in the church and be quarreling, bitter with your brother. Ag with aggravation with your brother it's not possible for you to be a useful tool in the hands of God outside of the church and here to be just standing disregarding everyone and anything not, not caring about <laughs> with the person that is sitting right next to you to not care about how you're supposed to stand in the church with awe and reverence. What were you talking about or preaching? But how the way you are living, not how you prophesizing, but what you are experiencing and living with your brothers. And we do thank God. I'm going to say this, and God knows, of course, my words. No matter how many prophecies I may speak out, if my life. It's not according to the way of life that Christ wants us to have. Then the word of God, the name of God is blasphemed even. I cannot come here and start prophesying with ripped jeans, with a, a Mohican hairstyle, with my biceps out. You, are not, you cannot be here with a uh, not proper way of dressing and say this is what the word of god says this is what the lord says no your way of life is not according it's not like to the talent and the prophecy that god is giving us we need to pay attention because the word of god is holy the church of christ not belonging to anyone the church of christ is belonging only to god and the commander is the spirit of god that is why you need to be careful do not just speak back there. Do not play with your mobile phone up there. Do not look to your, about, uh, towards your brother and turn around. Disregard him. Because the place that you are standing is a blessed, a holy land. And if God is patient with us, it is nothing. And it is nothing for him to turn a page and cast us away and work with different people that will be with deep understanding, will be reverent and obedient to the Word of God, humble and are able to work for God in the church. I mean.